Welcome to part two of this tutorial. Uh, so it's been about a year since part one, so apologies for the delay, but let's dive in. So this is where you would have left it, where you have the scene set up and basically there's no um, textures or lighting on the scene. So the first thing I've done is I added in a dome light and basically added the Canada Montreal um, HDRI, which is, I think, part of the Grayscale Gorilla collection. So uh, if you have that, you know, you can drop that in. Otherwise, there is some Maxime Rods HDRIs, which you know, are free on Gumroad, which I'll link in the description, and one of those, one of those will do the same job. Um, so I've enabled that, Intensity 1, Exposure 2, you don't need to go into the details and change anything else, that should be enough. Now for the, the material, um, what we're actually looking to do here is the, the kind of face we're actually just going to keep as white is more the, um, the other kind of parts here we're interested in texturing. So uh, if you come into the text here and selections, you can actually you know, select these at a different tags here. So if I go to shell, um, what it does is it actually selects um, basically the parts. So it's not the not the kind of end cap or the bevel. So it's basically the the kind of other parts of the the text. So let's um, let's just create a standard material here. And if I apply it, so you'll see straight away, we've got this gray material, but obviously it applies to the, the full object, even though I have the, the shell selected. So shell selected here, and you'll see next to it, it's got a capital S. So what we can do under the material and tag, we've got a selection here. So, you know, selection here being S, um, we can then come into here and just make sure you've got a capital S in this. That's really important. And what that will do is it'll apply the material to the shell. And if I come in and just change the color quickly on this, we'll be able to see it a bit clearer. So as you can see here, that's exactly what's happened. So basically that's what we can do with our shiny material. So, so let's load this up. Again, this is what you get in the scene file. I've linked to it in the description if you don't want to create this from scratch, but I'll just run through quickly how this is achieved. So basically we have a, a material blender and we have this base and specular, and then we also have this a light face and shader. Um, and this is based off a grayscale gorilla material and um, just kind of simplified down. So in the base material, we have this uh, magenta purple color um, with a weight of um, 0 0.86 and a roughness of 0 0.47. Um, the reflection I've kept and I've just added in a roughness of you know around about 0.4. I've also added in a coating on this as well, one and just a tiny bit of roughness, and basically that's it. Now for the color shift, um, so, so basically this is a ramp. So basically the, the light facing is when basically when we're rotating, uh, depending on the kind of angle, you're going to then get a different color. Um, so I've piped in a gradient here or a ramp with these uh, four different colors. So um, I can provide a hex value for each. So we've got 17B564 and then we have 134089. Then it's going to 8D1D2E. And the final purple is 280D51. Um, so we'll keep everything else the same here. And basically what we're going to do is plug in into the input alt. We've got this Fresnel here, um, which, which again just adds a, a really nice kind of way to, to kind of focus the light and almost add a bit of um, kind of gradient, if you like, to the to the edges, just so it's not a flat color. So we're going to pipe this into the um, so into the alt input and then into the reflection color. So that's the the first part. Um, the second part we we've got our second material. Um, which again, 
we just get with the, the same reflection values. We don't need anything in the diffuse here. Uh, and I've kept the same coating values as well. And basically for the light facing is against another Fresnel. So this just adds a bit more kind of interest, a bit more kind of layer on top of what we had already before. And we've got a facing color here of, so it's um, 15A0B0. And the perpendicular color is 593FB5. And the index of refraction I've cracked right up here to, to 25. And again, this is piped into reflection color. The, the bump map here, to be honest, it's just a, a tiny bit of turbulence, just to break it up a wee bit. So I've got a blistered turbulence in here, octaves of one and I've piped that into a bump map. It kept that really low, so 0 0.1, and the, the new range max is 0 0.01, and I've just put that into the bump of um, basically both of these materials. In the blender, you don't need to do any additive modes or anything. Um, that's really all you have to do. So if I then apply this to the text, basically this is our, our final result. And if you want to come in, and you know just sort of change some of these so you might want to i don't know play around with the with the roughness um you can do so and kind of update that and you'll get slightly different results obviously you can come in and change your colors as well so if you were to create something that was a bit more unique you can come in and and just sort of change these and you'll see as soon as you update them you know some of these other colors are getting piped in in a kind of clockwise direction. So that's essentially it. Um, in terms of um, render settings, I always render out at 1200 by 1200 for Instagram. Uh, the animation, as we know, is 160 frames, so just knock one off at the end so it loops. In terms of um, the redshift settings, basic, I've just kept that at medium. And I don't think I've really done it to the globals here. Maybe, maybe I actually just add a bit more reflection in. So the combined, just remember that the combined is um, the combination of reflection and refraction. So having that at 16 is obviously the sum of these two numbers. Um, I don't think anything else here. I've enabled caustics, but the ones that won't do anything. Um, in the redshift post effects, I did a wee bit of bokeh thin there, just a wee bit of depth of field. I think the final version as well, we just had a wee bit of bloom. Um, you can see they're just kind of lifting the whites a wee bit. But yeah, that's it. Um, I hope that was helpful. And yeah, any further questions, please let me know in the comments below. And please remember to like the video and I'll speak to you soon.